Stack John in this section is James Henry Michael. Make a feel very welcome. Start the round of applause. One, two, three, go. Ladies and gentlemen, on the stage. Henry Michael. Sorry, I had to kick the shit out of you, didn't I? <laughs> Comedy's like prison. Knock out the hardest kid on the way in, as we're going to imagine. Uh, this is lovely. I've heard such lovely things about you guys here in Liverpool. Uh, it's fantastic. I'm actually from Stoke on Trent. Um, uh, if you haven't been to Stoke, Stoke is a town on TripAdvisor, got 3.7. Doesn't sound bad. Stoke Prison got 4.1. You feel for it? I'm actually from the South, but you learn a lot about yourself when you move to new places, I find. Like, I never thought I sounded posh, but in Stoke, I sound like secret millionaire for the entire county. <laughs> like, my neighbour has got this accent. I can't tell if he's from Dudley or on Ketamine. <laughs> but next to him, I sound like Siri. <laughs> Every time he talks to me, I'm just like, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I don't really know why I sound this way either. You know, actually, uh, my mum's side of the family are actually all Polish, and uh, I don't often tell people that I'm Polish because I don't want to give the impression that I'm hardworking. <laughs> but uh, I am from a Polish family, quite a stocky kind of build family. I was the uh, fattest kid in my class growing up, fattest kid, but I was a trier, you know? <laughs> I was a trier. I pushed myself, do things like long distance running, as the other kids called it, the 100 meters. <laughs> I used to be obsessed with 90s rappers like Snoop Dogg, you know? He'd be rapping about fat ass and titties, and I'd be like, uh. <laughs> I've got those. <laughs> like, I was someone whose sex life only really started after I went to university, because that's when they invented broadband. Because <laughs> that did change everything. If you grew up in the 90s, the internet really changed a lot, you know? Because, like, before the internet, it was a lot harder to predict what you were going to get if you tried to look at porn. I remember once finding a VHS tape hidden in my dad's desk, labelled, Big Breasted Teen Gets Humiliated. I watched it. It's probably a video of me at sports day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have that, never had that natural confidence some guys have, you know? Like, you meet some people, they just back themselves no matter what. I went rock climbing once, and I saw a guy put himself down as his own emergency contact. <laughs> no matter what happens, call me. <laughs> it? Like, if he falls off a cliff, the staff are just like, oh, well, somebody better call him. <laughs> Never really had that, you know? I think girls can sense confidence. Like, girls would just break up with me for very weird reasons, you know? My last girlfriend broke up with me because we didn't see each other enough. I was like, well, how's this going to help? <laughs> Like, one girl said she wouldn't go on a date with me because her housemate had anxiety. <laughs> so that's not a reason, that's just a separate fact. <laughs> like, it has to be linked. You can't be like, oh, I would go on a date with you, but uh, my uncle's gay. So. <laughs> no, I would love to, but Palestine. Yeah. <laughs> Tried the Tinder thing, just became the hardest game on my iPhone. <laughs> like, I actually ran out of all women in my entire city, and no one really warns you that Tinder has a game over screen. <laughs> It does, it's just a blank map, being like, all right, well, be gay or move. Like, <laughs> I actually got catfished by a fake profile, complete true story, yeah. In retrospect, there were subtle signs, you know, like the way she'd make me call her Keith. <laughs> but I was too stupid, I was like, this girl's fit, but she's obsessed with bank details. <laughs> uh, I don't know, when does your card expire? Great question. <laughs> Uh, it does get better, though. That's my advice for, for single people. Any single people in? Yeah. Wow, just you two. I match. Oh, no, and you guys as well. All right, well, we'll set up a WhatsApp group. It'll be fine. <laughs> hey, look, and you might enjoy being single. I actually didn't have a great time being single, but it gets better. That's my advice. Things get better. Like, uh, my girlfriend's actually planning our wedding at the moment. Aww. Yeah, which is a bit intense. I haven't proposed, but... <laughs> fine. I don't care. But uh, no, she wants to go back to Italy and have a traditional Italian wedding. She's from this lovely little town in the south called, and I hope I'm saying this right, uh, Bristol. <laughs> like, I've honestly never understood that very British thing, wanting to go abroad and have your wedding in someone else's culture. That never happens the other way around, does it? 
There were no Italian girls who always dreamed of getting married in a Weatherspoons. <laughs> I get that relationships are a bit about give and take, you know, like uh, we've been going out long enough now that I get in trouble if I try and watch porn. Because you know, apparently that's somehow selfish and makes our guests uncomfortable. Uh, your parents wanted to see the house, it's my Sunday. So I actually once got told off for something, I, I woke up in trouble for something I did while I was asleep. You guys ever had that? Yeah, I mean, I was driving, so it's kind of fair. But <laughs> the one I get a lot, though, is that when, uh, when I text, apparently I come across as very cold and distant. That's the one. I don't know if that's a guy thing. You guys have been told you have that? Yeah, well, you're obviously all lovers. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but so I get that. Apparently when I text, I'm very distant. Uh, like tonight, for example, uh, my girlfriend texts me saying, I wish you were here. I love you. So, yeah, so I text her back saying, I love you too. I'll call you as soon as I'm off stage. Just do what the midwife says. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not true. No, of course, uh, I love my girlfriend very much. And uh, I try to be a very good person. I don't like taking myself as a good person, you know. Like, uh, when I'm not doing comedy, I actually uh, work for a little organisation known as the NHS. Not sure if, yeah, all right. Well, I used to get applause on the weekday, but go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. You're the person I kicked as well. That's very generous of you. That's all right. I'll see you in six months. It'll be fine. But it's funny, when I do comedy, actually, a lot of people don't believe that I'm a doctor. They sort of think I'm making it up for the stage. I did a gig last week, and a lady shouted, prove it. So I made her wait in the corridor for 12 hours. <laughs> Just like, you didn't need to be here and sent her home, you know. Just kind of stuff. And it's, uh, you know, it's funny, sometimes people ask me, how do you have the time to be a doctor and do comedy? And it's simple, really. Uh, negligence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turns out it's a real time saver, actually. <laughs> uh, obviously, that's not true. This is going on fucking YouTube. I got <laughs> 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 this has been fun, but I don't want this to be my last time I ever work again. <laughs> but uh, no, obviously, that's not true. I work very hard for my patients. A very, very, very hard worker. Uh, and if you wonder how hard I work, just take a look at my fucking head. That's what I do. <laughs> like, I'm 33 years old. I look like posh Gollum. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm losing hair or gaining forehead. <laughs> I, this is true. The other, the other week, I took a picture of my thumb by accident, and the phone recognised it as my face <laughs> and tagged me in it. <laughs> you sort of reach this point with baldness as well, where other people think it's fine just to make jokes about it. One of my patients last week was like, oh, we should call you Dr. Baldilocks. <laughs> it's like, oh, we should stop your morphine. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and, I, and also, something about being like a, a young guy with a receding hairline, for some reason, makes you irresistibly attractive to elderly women. <laughs> and those guys have no filter. And one of my patients last week was like, all oh, the things I would do to you if I was 10 years younger. So like, well, you're 80 now, Doris. <laughs> We don't have a threesome with your carer, are we? <laughs> and I don't know why all people do that. Like they, with compliments, they always like start really nice. Then there's like a hurtful sting of honesty at the end. <laughs> like, you're a good-looking lad. Doesn't matter that you're going bold. Then don't mention it. <laughs> You'd be perfect for my daughter. She's got low self-esteem. <laughs> It's sweet when they do it to you. If you do it back to them, it's just mean. You can't be like, you're a lovely lady, Ethel. I'll miss you next year. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, is fine. Uh, to, uh, you know, but I love that generation. I love that generation. Because they, they don't make a fuss. They don't make a fuss, you know. Whereas us, we like to complain about things. That's like our We complain about things. I once made the mistake of looking at the Facebook reviews for my local hospital. And it was amazing, because most of them were kind of the emotional extremes. You know, they were sort of like angry one star or kind of very emotional five star. But I saw one review that was a genuine review that just said, very simply, saved my mother's life. <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mum's alive, but the CPR was noisy, wasn't it? Eh? <laughs> like that. Not nearly as good as Stoke Prison. That place was fucking brilliant. <laughs> All right, guys. Stokey, you're Stokey. I could tell by the tattoos. <laughs> I could. I was like, that man is lovely and terrifying at the same time. 
That is a stoke vibe. Guys, you have really lived up to your reputation. An absolute delight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Michael, ladies and gentlemen. All right.